Recently, a new Neptunia game came out in the West, Neptunia Virtual Stars. This is a spin-off game and I've been quite curious about this one. Back in November 2019, I didn't know what to think. I didn't really understand that it was about VTubers. I saw idol type stuff, so I thought it was an idol thing. Only a month later, I saw a clip of Miko from Hololive saying a certain word while playing GTA 5. And then countless hours and videos later, I finally understood that my impressions of Virtual Stars wasn't quite correct. I'm sure people will have lots of questions. What's the gameplay like? Can you enjoy the game if you aren't into VTubers? Or can VTuber fans enjoy the game if they don't know anything about Neptunia? Those sort of things we'll try and address in this review. I should mention that the game was provided by Idea Factory. To be more precise, they sent over the PS4 Limited Edition, which we're going to take a look at later in the video. Thank you, Idea Factory. I'm glad you emailed me a day before I planned to pre-order it. So let's talk about what Neptunia Virtual Stars is. As I'm writing this, it's a PS4 exclusive, but there's going to be a PC Steam release at the end of March, and by the time you're watching this, it might already be out. Virtual Stars is an action RPG shooter game. It plays a bit like Neptunia U or Blonde vs. Zombies, combined with shooting mechanics that feel like they're from Senran Kagura Peach Beach Splash. Well, kinda, but we'll get into that. Tamsoft is the developer here, so it kind of makes sense. They've done uh, a lot of the spin-offs as well as the Senran Kagura games, so hence the similarities there. The premise of the story is actually quite a good idea. Neptunia was originally about various aspects of the console wars, and Virtual Stars is like that too, just with VTubers. I know there's a lot of people these days that watch VTubers, whether it's translated clips or actual streams. At the same time, there's also plenty of people who don't, so there are some things that perhaps need a bit of explanation. If you don't know, virtual YouTubers or VTubers are people who stream or make videos with an anime avatar. For the most part, it's playing games, though some VTubers have their skills in their fields, so some do drawing streams, singing, slash karaoke, and so on and so forth. The first really known virtual YouTuber was Kazuna Ai, but it actually took a few years before the idea of VTubers became more popular. Precisely late 2019 and early 2020, when translated clips of VTubers from the Hololive and Nichi Sanji groups started getting traction. VTubers have their roots in idol culture, though I think most of us can agree that the non-idol aspects is what actually appeals to most people. I'm pretty sure you'd be hard-pressed to describe barfing, eating tarantulas, talking about piss, or doing black metal-style screams while slamming a table as idol-like behavior. VTubers from the last couple of years are much more open and genuine about their personal lives and experiences, which is what makes them so appealing. You know that famous Oscar Wilde quote? You've probably heard it like paraphrased here and there before, but it goes like this. Man is least himself when he talks in his own person. Give him a mask and he will tell you the truth. That's basically what's going on here. Combine that with all the different translators and fan subbers and you get something that feels somehow in the spirit of how watching anime was like in around 2010. I think overall it's really cool. And it's a subject I am very much interested in. A lot of the culture surrounding VTubers comes from idol culture, including aunties who have been a big problem with conventional idols for a long time. So Neptunia Virtual Stars is about that conflict between VTubers slash content creators versus aunties. The game takes place in Virtua Land. There's a planet called Emote which is under attack by content-destroying Antis. The goddess of Emote, Feyra or Fyra is how it's written, but I think it's pronounced differently actually. So I don't know why they changed it around, but whatever. Uh, but anyways, she tries to gather up a group of saviors to save the planet. She manages to recruit the four goddesses of game industry, Neptune, Noir, Vert, and Blonde, as well as an up-and-coming duo of VTubers, You and Me and together they call themselves Mutual. The way the story portrays Antis is that they're just regular people who, due to being influenced by an unknown source, slowly gain a corrupt personality. When you defeat them in battles, they go back to normal without knowing why they were so hateful in the first place. Our protagonists then go forth and try to figure out who and what is causing people to turn into Antis. Let's talk about the gameplay. It's an action RPG game that also includes shooting mechanics. If you've played a few Neptunia games, then there's a lot of things that'll feel somewhat familiar. You have dungeons with floors and various paths. There's a central hub where you can do all your central hub stuff, like buy items, save your game, and select which dungeon to go to, among other things. The big difference between regular Neptunia games and Virtual Stars is that the enemies are fought in real time. 
The four goddesses use a variety of guns, while the VTubers use a more traditional hack and slash type of gameplay, though there are ranged attacks they can do too. Characters have regular and special attacks that they can use. Special attacks use up MP, which regenerates. Health does not regenerate, but you can have it regenerate like uh, when you're outside of battle. The goddesses can also use a boost function where they, I guess, skate across the ground. You can go in all directions and it's quite fast. There's a cool little roll or cartwheel type animation when the boost ends. Neptune is a good all-rounder, decently fast shooting and medium range. Noir deals more damage and has the shortest range. Blonde shoots very slowly but does big damage especially if you charge the shots. And Vert has the longest range with slightly slow shooting speed. There are four VTubers you can control except, uh, unlike with the goddesses, they're arranged in pairs. The first group is me and you as uh, mentioned before and the second is Weiss and Licht. You have two fighting at the same time. You can only switch between the pairs at save points, but you can switch between the two characters whenever you want. The goddesses portion of the gameplay feels a bit like a, you know, unrefined version of Senran Kagura Peach Beach Splash. When aiming, it'll auto-aim and hit the enemy, provided it's in range and also in this aiming square. I usually default to Vert because of her range, not because of her idle animation, that's just a coincidence. Whenever I come across some new enemies, I uh, sometimes switch characters. When I find out that the party is a bit underpowered, uh, I usually use Blonde because she can deal big damage. With Blonde, you have to be more careful when it comes to aiming because of uh, the slow shooting speed. And also getting hit interrupts your charging shots, so it's best to just uh, make sure you're safe when you're doing that. The VTubers feel a bit like the Neptunia U or Blonde vs. Zombies game, but you don't really need to ever switch away from the goddesses in my opinion. The goddesses can shoot from a distance so they're less likely to take damage, and they're also way faster. Not only in battle, but also when you're running around a dungeon, because you can just boost around. Experience points are shared, so you don't have to worry about uneven leveling. The game is easy enough. There's a sudden difficulty spike at one point early on, but you can just grind a bit more, equip some better stuff, and you're fine. Honestly, I think they should have worked on making sure that the gameplay is smooth and satisfying, which it kinda isn't. It's all a bit clunky. Neptunia U had more satisfying hack and slash mechanics. It just kinda flowed well. So, you know, why didn't they do that here? And the shooting portion also doesn't feel as good as it did in Peach Beach Splash. Aiming is a bit fussy and not very precise. They could have done better. If they refined those two aspects a bit more, I think there would be more of an incentive to switch between the goddesses and VTubers also. The VTubers, as in the real ones you can watch online, not the playable ones, uh, they serve as equipable items. They work in the same way as rings or accessories work in other RPGs, so no, they aren't playable characters. When you're at the base, there are VTubers on the screen in the plaza, which is kind of fun. Hololive actually has some Holono Graffiti episodes, which I thought was cool. You know, just have those playing there. One thing I do like is how the subtitles are color-coded in the same way, you know, the translators do it. And they also use that classic fan sub font, which is a nice touch. Since we're on the topic of the plaza, you can do some light base building. Basically, you spend your earned points slash money on shops so you can buy items and other things. The plaza is where you can access something called Beat Tick Studio. It's a rhythm mini game. You can select a character, song, and stage, and you have the time button presses with the beat. It's really simplified for a rhythm game, though. You don't have to hit, like, you know, specific buttons. Any face button will do. I wish there was a bit more to it because, I don't know, it just feels like uh, that's a bit of a missed opportunity. But I guess they just wanted to keep it very casual, perhaps. You earn points which you can exchange for other beat tick related things like songs, for example. It's a fun little thing to play around with though, also because it is fan servicey too. You can change outfits and even pause the video to rotate the camera around the character. I do wish there was more control over the camera though. Whenever I have specific camera angles in mind, the camera system just doesn't allow me to point it, you know, the direction I want it to exactly. And my artistic vision remains unfulfilled. One thing that's also annoying is that the game stutters sometimes, which can mess up your timing a little bit. That's kind of a problem when it comes to rhythm games. I should mention that there's no English dub this time round, probably because of the VTubers being Japanese. It would have been quite strange to have them dubbed into English. I like the Neptunia English dub usually, but I've got no problems with the Japanese voices, of course. I often switch back and forth anyway, so I'm used to both. Since I don't have the PC version, I can only comment on the PS4 version, 
when it comes to graphics and performance. I mainly played on the PS5, but I gave it a go on a regular PS4 as well. The game overall looks okay from an art style perspective. Since the game takes place in a virtual world, the environments look suitably digital. Until you get out of the first area and then the idea goes out the window and everything goes, apparently. Hello, Cake Windmill. It's nice to see that they didn't recycle dungeons from previous games, though. Even the monsters are for the most part unique to the game. The enemies do look a bit bizarre, though. Not that that's unusual for a Neptunia game. You may have noticed that the Neo Tube dungeon has a lot of Morero Chronicle or Crystal illustrations. From what I understand, a lot, or even most of the art, was not done by Tsunako, because she's gone um, freelance lately. But rather, it's done by Katsuyuki Hirano, who worked on a lot of Compile Heart stuff like Morero Chronicle, Gun Gun Pixies, the Argorist games, and many others. He's also not a stranger to Neptunia games, so he's probably a decent replacement. He's definitely doing a good job at emulating Tsunako's art style, because her art style is definitely unique and not easily replicated, but he manages to pull that off quite well. I like the character designs, specifically the goddess's new idol clothes. They seem to fit the theme quite well. There's still a good amount of design cues that reference their standard designs, or their standard outfit designs rather, so I think that's cool that that has been preserved. The new characters are also distinctive and easily recognizable. Neptunia is usually quite good when it comes to not having too many overlapping character designs. All VTubers very often don't have idol designs or adhere to the idol stereotype. You and me do have that sort of look. I think it's fine since it's made quite clear that they are a singing duo. Cutscenes are 3D, which is a bit ironic considering that Neptunia was one of the first games to utilize live 2D technology in video games around 10 years ago. And most VTubers now primarily use live 2D. That being said, Virtual Stars is a spin-off and those don't always have the live 2D stuff. But still, I just thought it was interesting. But the good thing about it being 3D is that uh, there's some new expressions and things like that. So that makes the cutscenes feel a bit more fresh compared to a lot of the 2D based ones that we've seen over the years. And given the fact that there are a lot of cutscenes, that's a good thing. Now let's talk about performance. What you've been seeing here is PS5 footage and considering what's going on with the frame rate and resolution, that's not really that good. The menus look okay, but the game definitely doesn't reach 4K. Some of this looks like even below 1080p at some points. The game runs at around 30 FPS usually. Some dungeons run a bit better than others though, don't really expect, you know, moments of 60 FPS. Except uh, that little intro that plays when you uh, have a new dungeon that's introduced to you. Then it runs at 60 FPS, but not when you're actually playing. Oh, you want this smooth experience? How about no? Thanks game. Cutscenes are kind of random with their frame rate. Even in the same dungeon, it'll be 30 FPS at one point, and then suddenly it'll be 60 later on, so I don't know. Honestly, this game should run at 60 FPS, especially on a PS5. I think they were a bit too keen on adding things like bump mapping, reflections, and whatever other effects. If they just kept the graphics at Peach Beach Splash levels, then everyone would have a better time and the game would have looked just fine. And that's on the PS5. Let's try Virtual Stars on a base model PS4 and see how that goes. Interestingly, it's basically the same. There's more jagged staircase action, but the game otherwise looks almost the same and performs pretty much the same too. I was kind of surprised. Even the loading times are like not that different. Not sure how they managed to not make use of all the extra processing power on the PS5, but at least the PS5 runs the game silently, unlike the PS4, which does its signature noises. Overall, I think the premise and idea of Neptunia Virtual Stars is good. The story is entertaining and it's quite a relevant and recent subject. Whether you watch VTubers or not, they are a big deal, so I think it's interesting, uh, or rather it's a good thing that they talked about the subject. If you are into VTubers, you'll notice some references here and there, though VTubers seem to be portrayed as being more proper idols in this game. So I don't know if uh, people who are not into Neptunia, if they'd like this game. I'm sure some will, but others probably won't. If you're more of a Nep fan and not really into VTubers that much, I think you can still enjoy the story though. You still get a classic Nep style story where you go to a different dimension and save the world with characters you meet along the way. And it still has the same kind of humor too. And if you like both, you'll probably have fun with this game, though the more uh, broad approach on the whole 
VTuber subject may be something that's slightly disappointing. All right, let's take a look at the limited edition. There's two that are available from Ify's online store, the PS4 and Steam version. They're the same, except the PC version doesn't come with a physical game. You get a code emailed to you. Other than that, they're the same. That would explain why the PS4 game was packaged separately from the LE box. The record is also its own thing because it's way too big for the LE box. Here's the game featuring most of the main characters on the cover. I noticed Weiss and Licht are missing. I guess they aren't main character enough. The Japanese cover is slightly different. Vert's cleavage is too much for the Western market. Ironically, it's Noir providing the coverage. The back is interesting because it has no screenshots, which is unusual. Just quotes from the Japanese voice actors of the Four Goddesses, as well as Neptunia producer Naoko Mizune. It's almost like a passive-aggressive approach of telling you that the game isn't featuring English voice acting. It also states that the voices are in Japanese, and the text is American English specifically, apparently. Using flags to represent a language is quite normal, but they can be different depending which region of the world you're in. So I'm wondering whether, you know, people who have the European version of this game have an American flag there or a British flag. I used to be a graphic designer, so regional differences always interest me, especially because I often had to take American packaging and make it Canadian by adding French and, you know, getting rid of American flags or whatever. The inside has a little... Well, it's not quite a manual, but it shows controls and stuff, and it's in color. The cover is reversible and features an image with all the main characters, but not Fyra or Fera, or however you pronounce that. Not that it matters, because the actual pronunciation seems to be different in the Japanese dub. For some reason, the alternate cover just looks really similar to the normal one. I kind of wish they used something more different looking. The LE box features a group shot. It's essentially the same as the alternate cover art, except everyone's a bit more spaced apart. The inside of the lid has some art that wraps around, which is cool. The bottom part has some art as well, with the VTubers on one side and the goddesses on the other. You know, like little chibi versions of them. There's an exclusive trading card of Neptune. Idea Factory has these trading cards, and some can only be obtained by getting certain LEs, and this is one of them. Underneath that, we have a steel case, and yes, you get it in the Steam version too even though you get the code emailed to you. I guess you could just go to Steam, right-click on the game, back up game files, and then burn that to a disc and throw it in there or something. The steel case has a cool design. It's more light and airy because of the lighter colors. Goddesses on the front, VTubers on the back. The inside has some silhouettes going on, and I like the music-themed equalizer-type graphic. Or I guess it's more like a spectrum analyzer. It can hold a disc and a manual, for some reason, it doesn't close that well. I mean, it's not like it comes open or anything, but it feels a bit weird how it clasps together. It doesn't align properly. Underneath is the soundtrack, the CD soundtrack specifically. There's more tracks on here than on the record, just so you know. Again, it's all very idle themed. The dark background on the disc somehow helps the characters pop out a little bit more. There's a hardcover art book. It includes character profiles, CG illustrations, backgrounds, and things of that sort. Onto the record, or LP, or vinyl record, or whatever you want to call it. It's by far the largest of all items, as long as you don't count thickness, obviously. The goddesses are on the front. Outside of posters, it's usually rare to see illustrations that large or close up, since most limited edition items aren't that big. But they are here. The back has the track list, as well as that TV dog thing I forgot the name of. The inside shows the characters posing about, I couldn't help but notice that they used the 3D models here rather than illustrations. There's a lyrics book, which feels like a doujin. There's something about the paper quality and the texture. If you own any of these semi-official Strike Witches doujinshi, it's quite close to how some of those are. They even have the same smell. The record itself is purple and pink. This is my first fancy looking record. Everything else I have is just, you know, normal black. I thought my first colored record would come from either like a Jack White album or a metal band, but nope, it's Neptunia. I originally wanted to talk a little bit about the sound quality. While CDs are technically superior, records are usually mastered better and aren't as brick-walled. I want to see if that was the case, but currently my old realistic record player sounds a bit warbly because of an old belt, so that's not really the best uh, sort of equipment to use for this testing there. Either way, it's a nice novelty at least. 
There's also something I almost missed, but there's a poster which resides in the same pocket as the lyric book, so on the left side. It's supposed to look like a tour poster with all the concert dates. And that's all the things in the limited edition. I quite like the design, and the included record is really cool. I remember people mentioning in another video that they don't have a record player, and would have preferred an option without the LP. That's fair enough, but at the same time, LEs often include things that don't, you know, even have a function. Like, for example, with Shantae and the Seven Sirens, that has like a fake Game Boy Color cartridge that does nothing other than look cool. So I'm sure a lot of people can appreciate it as something like that. I mean, you can display it because it has a cool color and everything and a cool design. But yeah, still, an option would have been nice since I'm sure some people would have preferred to not pay the, you know, extra cost associated with the record there. And yeah, I think that's everything dealt with. Neptunia Virtual Stars, unfortunately, has some flaws with its gameplay and performance. That is the most disappointing part. I do think the story is interesting, even though I still think certain aspects of VTubers could have been explored a bit more. But still, the story kept me playing despite my complaints with how the game plays. So let me know what you think of Neptunia Virtual Stars and the limited edition. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in the next video.